let's get real here. Managing more than 10 to 20 servers can feel like herding cats. And once you reach some level of scale, humans can't keep up anymore. We need to treat infrastructure like a coding problem and let the machines do the work. I'm Mel Delgado, developer advocate at Cisco. I want to show you how you can get started with managing servers using the Python UCSM SDK. Let's start with an overview of the Cisco UCS. It's the Unified Computing System line of servers, and the keyword here in UCS is the word system. Logically, the system is a collection of items operating together as a system. And the glue? It's the management software. It's software that brings it together as a system. And from its inception, the UCS platform was built with programmability in mind. Thus, every UCS server has a SIMC, which is a uh, Cisco Integrated Management Controller for out-of-band management built in. If you haven't physically seen or worked with a UCS server, a picture is worth a thousand words. So here's a quick rundown of the different UCS server offerings using the Kaon Interactive application. First up is the UCS C series, which is a standalone rack mount server. This is the UCS C220, a 1RU rack server. Open the top and let's see, we'll open the top cover and that will reveal that it is a two socket server supporting up to two second gen Xeon scalable processors with up to nine terabytes of memory. That's right, nine with a T, as in nine terabytes. That's a lot, That's what is it, 9,000 gigabytes? That's a lot. Here's the C240, a two RU server, also with up to two second gen Xeon scalable processors, but with more disks than the C220. And there are many more to choose from. I posted a link if you want to explore the other available rack mount form factors. But for now, I want you to focus on the interface that makes it programmable. On the backside of each of the UCS chassis, you will find a SIMC management port. That is an IP uh, connection with an onboard SIMC management ASIC that provides you with a web-based user interface. You can navigate to the IP address uh, with your browser uh, and log into the UI. That's a great way to manage the server itself, one at a time. But what if you want to manage the server programmatically? Doing so would free you up to manage many servers at once. Well, the same interface also offers a Redfish uh, REST API, which, when enabled, serves as a REST API endpoint. In addition to the REST API, there's also the Python SDK, which you can use to manage the server programmatically using Python. Let me show you something else. UCS is also available uh, in a blade form factor named the UCS B series. It consists of a chassis of up to uh, eight half width blades and up to four full width blades that span across uh, the entire width of the chassis. Here we see a uh, half width blade, which is named the B200 with up to two second gen Xeon scalable processors and up to nine terabytes of memory. That's a lot of firepower and it's such a small form factor. Let's put that back and let's have a look at the B480, which offers up to four sockets of second gen Xeon scalable processors and up to 18 terabytes of memory, effectively being twice that of the B200. Uh, for uh, Which form factor makes the most sense for you depends on the workload the server will run. Both types of blades plug, let's see if we can plug this back into the chassis here. Uh, both types of blades plug into the chassis and the chassis have up to two integrated input output modules, also known as IOMs, which are located on the rear of the chassis. Both types of blades plug into the chassis and the chassis have up to two integrated input output modules, also known as IOMs, which provide all forms of connectivity to the fabric interconnect. Each cable carries ethernet, fiber channel, fiber channel over ethernet, serial over LAN, fiber channel, thus forming a fabric which connects into a fabric interconnect. These connections on the back of the UCS B series IOMs connect to the fabric interconnects. You, know, you can add a second fabric interconnect for active redundancy. In this scenario, I'll draw four connections between the, the first IOM in the chassis and the second fabric interconnect. 
Then I'll do the same for the second IOM in the chassis and the second interconnect. You can have just one connection or connect up to four different links for additional throughput, which is what I've drawn here. All chassis and servers that connect to the interconnect form what's called a UCS domain. You can also connect UCS C-Series to the Fabric Interconnect for a maximum of 160 servers per domain. In large environments, you can imagine having more than one UCS domain with each pair of FIs being a separate endpoint. Multiple domains, each with a maximum of 160 endpoints, means, uh, a multiple, means multiple endpoints to manage. More on this, separate video, uh, more, uh, on this in a separate video where I show you how you can consolidate endpoints using Cisco Intersight. So why all of this is important is that manage, uh, out of band management lives on board the Cisco Fabric Interconnect. If you navigate to the management virtual IP address, you'll find a web-based user interface to manage the servers that are part of that domain. You can use the web UI or you can programmatically manage the domain and the servers themselves using the Python SDK. For this video, we have access to a pair of physical UCS fabric interconnects running in our lab environment. I'll show you around the user interface to get a feel for what the resources, uh, for what resources are available. First, we see the physical devices are, uh, we'll see the physical devices connected, including several standalone rack mount servers and one UCS chassis. Let's do something fun like using the Python SDK to pull inventory of all the physical servers connected to, the UC, uh, to this UCS domain. I'll start by installing the Python SDK using the command pip install UCSM SDK. Now that the Python SDK is installed, I'll, I'll start Jupyter Notebook so we can use cell by cell code execution to explain what I'm doing one step at a time. If you aren't familiar with Jupyter Notebook, check out my video named Jupyter Notebook do more in less time. I'll post a link in the description below. And here we go. What we'll do is we'll create a new Python file. One of the first things that we'll do is we will say from UCSM SDK UCS handle import UCS handle. Let's first create a handle. Oh, if I could just type. All right, UCS handle, shift enter. You can also, by the way, you could do a uh, help with uh, UCS handle just to be sure things are working okay. There it is. We'll do our cool little trick where we double click this space, double click it, and then it'll go away. All right. So one of the things we want to do is we want to set ourselves up to pull some inventory. So the first thing we'll need to do is to pass the credentials of your uh, physical UCS. And if you're using UCS uh, platform emulator, that is okay too. You'll still need to pass the credentials as needed. So in this case, our UCSM is sitting at, or our UCS, yeah, UCS manager is sitting at 10.200.0.5. We're going to pass some credentials. Yeah, let's see here and Okay, and let's do this, and let's do a handle dot login. All right, if everything went okay, you'll see true being returned. Let's see, I'll do a blades. I'll add this to a variable called blades. I'll do a handle dot query uh, dot or handle query underscore class ID compute blade. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll print all the blades. What you see was returned is a list. So what we can do is we can iterate over that list by doing a for blade in blades and let's print blade. Let's see how that goes. Aha, there we go. So now we see that those are objects and each one of those blades returned in the list of objects there, you'll see a whole bunch of attributes that are returned. So you'll see that it is available for each blade. So that's a lot of data. And so one of the things we can do is we can say, well, gee, just, just return certain uh, attributes about that. For example, the distinguished name, maybe the number of CPUs, the amount of available memory, we could do that as well. So what we'll do is let's do a four blade in blades 
Okay, and then we'll do a print blade dot distinguished name. So that's the first thing we want to do. Let's do a uh, blade uh, dot, uh, I don't know, let's see, from up here, num of cores, or okay, num, uh, num of CPUs and blade dot, uh, I, let's, available, I think this is one of the attributes, available, oops, if I could spell, available underscore memory. Okay, let's go over that list, and here we go. That's distinguished name, which means that it's under a system, it's under chassis one, it is blade number eight, it has two CPUs, and it has 132 gigs of available memory. Um, I think that is uh, something you could do using the user interface. However, this would probably take a lot more time to do uh, at scale. So you have lots and lots of blades to deal with in your inventory. It's going to take you a while to find this information and maybe deposit it into a spreadsheet or what have you if you want to have a bird's eye view of everything that's going on in the inventory. Now, if you want to log out, we can just do a handle.logout. Okay, and now we're finished. If everything worked out well there, you'll see a true returned. Now we see the blades, names, the number of CPU cores, and the amount of available memory. We're off to a great start with using the UCSM Python SDK to do more in less time. These examples use physical equipment, which you may not have access to, or if you do, it could be in production, so it's not a good environment to experiment with. Luckily, there's a UCSM platform emulator available for download from cisco.com. It's a virtual machine running an emulated version of the UCS Manager software found on board the Fabric Interconnect. Download the uh, Python UCSM SDK and use the UCS Platform Emulator as your endpoint. So you can also get some hands-on experience with a combination of our Learning Lab and Sandbox environments available for free on developer.cisco.com. Click on Sandbox Catalog and search for UCS and select the UCS Management and Reserves. Let's do that. We'll click on Sandbox here. Go up here to search this, or I'm sorry, let's go to the sandbox catalog. And then what we'll do is up here, we'll do uh, UCS. Search for that. You'll see a couple options. You want to click reserve. The lab takes a few minutes to set up and once completed, you'll receive an email with credentials to access the lab resources. In the meantime, you can start getting familiar with the Python SDK with the three-part series of the UCS Python SDK Introduction Learning Lab located at, at uh, developer.cisco.com under Learning Tracks. So let's do that. Let's go over here to Learning Tracks, search for UCS, and then under UCS for Infrastructure Developers, look at the Python SDK Introduction. Let's click there. And then we'll click the Python SDK introduction and introduction to UCS Python SDK part one. That's the one we're looking for. There's part two and three. If you feel like you already know a lot of what's in part one, uh, feel free to check out the others. We're gonna do part one and I'll show you just how you can get started here. Uh, you'll find the learning objective here in the first page when you land on it. Click start learning located at the bottom of the page. We do that, okay. And what you'll see is on the right-hand side, a container start to spin up. And what you'll find is down here is a terminal window and up, uh, up top here on the right-hand side is a file viewer. This is where you'll create files if need be. All right, so make your way through the instructions uh, that show how to install the Python UCSM SDK in much the same way we did earlier and keep going until you complete the lab. With this and so many more exercises, you'll gain an in-depth explanation of the concepts and capabilities of the Python SDK. We covered a lot of ground. So where do we go from here? Well, if you wanna learn more about what the different UCS servers look like in 3D animation, visit Kon Interactive at the link provided below. To get some hands-on experience with the UCSM Python SDK, visit us at developer.cisco.com and reserve a sandbox and dive into the learning labs today. I'll also ha uh, add those links below as well as some other helpful resources. If you enjoyed this video, you may also like my video on the Cisco Intersight Python SDK and Jupyter Notebook do more in less time. Thanks for watching.